Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and when last we left off this project was called Gropy and now it is called Pipulate. I believe it's a better name. I renamed it twice actually, first as Pipulate, but I felt that was too insider. P only Python people would understand the PY reference and it's a more complicated name. Pipulate is a play on populate. And it still has a Python Insider reference, but it's easy to uh, pronounce and remember. And I also got the .com domain. It's not active yet. And I also scored the Levinix.com domain. So I've got a whole bunch of website updating to do and uh, have nice topically focused websites, whereas currently everything's sort of mixed together. Anyone who has the old gropey uh, bookmarks from GitHub, it should automatically forward you. And I have uh, violated my rule of having every commit that I do accompanied by a YouTube video. That's only because I added a lot of doc string documentation and inline documentation and comments. So what do I mean by that? Well, a doc string is underneath a function. You'll put typically one line like this, and so long as it's a multi-line doc string, uh, you put a empty line so that tools that create documentation automatically out of your source code have a nice brief one-liner to work with. And then the rest of it, you can document it. There's some conventions like what the arguments are supposed to mean and stuff, but I just used natural descriptions of what they are. So shift G here at the top, whoops, no, GG, here at the top, there's this giant doc string, which is the doc string for the module. And per conventions, the first line is a simple uh, explanation of what the entire module or file is. And this is the parent file of the entire project. This little R here is to turn it into a raw character string, because if I got rid of it, it would actually, well, the color coding isn't changing and it would probably still work. But I do have a backslash right here. Oh, it's probably working because it's trailed by a space, and a backslash, backslash trailed by a space has no meaning, so it knows not to uh, treat that as an escape character. I'll keep it like this. It's a little less confusing to have that lowercase r, but putting that lowercase r means don't use escaping for backslashes and stuff that it might find. And now for people who are following the project and sort of lost track of where we were going with this, we're actually going to be able to turn these functions into functions like tweets and pluses and shares and likes. And when you hit the, uh, uh, when you run the program, which will actually be done from a bookmarklet up here, the same way as when you click Mike Levin SEO, uh, it will replace the question marks with the output of the functions. And the functions are currently at the bottom of the file. Now I'll use my shift G and you can see the func1 and func2. These are functions that are going to be turned into modules or external uh, extensions, be, be put in a separate file. And these very generic names like func1 and func2 will re be replaced by the much more useful names, um, even like title and meta description and stuff like that. So let's go back to the top of the file and just take a quick look down how this is going to work. So there's def main and how does it even start executing? Well what's going to happen first is as Python reads down it's going to read that giant doc string at the top as a character string. It's a little bit of overhead but it, it doesn't really matter. And then it's going to read this line and get and establish all the uh, global object variables that I need. Then it's going to scan each function main do sheet. And you can see they're all documented and they all even have inline documentation uh, to show, you know, when it goes through this path, it's doing the shelve object and CSV route. And when it goes this other path, it's doing the Google Spreadsheets route. I'm thinking of breaking those out with a uh, the Python equivalent of a switch statement. That might be my next video. But anyway, we got your inline documentation, you got your process row, you got your row one function processing, you're evaling the funks on the column names, 
getting the arguments that are required, quoting it right, and it's really quite a small program. And not until Python has sort of scanned down and tasted all the functions does it invoke main. And again, that's a reminder, if we uh, shift 8 on that, it brings you back to the next mention of main, and then it actually steps in here and then starts stepping through the uh, correct order of operations now that everything has been uh, loaded into memory by Python, or at least encountered, so that uh, it built the objects in memory it needs. There's nothing it's going to encounter that hasn't been defined yet. Uh, so Python scans from top to bottom and then starts invoking uh, in the order you define it, which I happen to also have made top from bo top to bottom. So main leads to do sheet, do sheet leads to process row, one row at a time. Each time a row is processed, well, row one, if it's row one, then all the um, all the function requirements are established, and then it goes on to row two, and every time, it, uh, as it steps through the rows, uh, every time it encounters a question mark, it tries to um, execute the correct statement uh, that needs to be executed to get the return code for that question mark so that it can replace the question mark uh, with the correct value. And, uh, Get arg value is actually in building the character that is going to be, or the character string that is going to be evaled. It looks a lot like a function call. And, um, and then the functions that are currently callable. And that's an overview of pipulate so far. And I like that name pipulate a lot more because you can say, well, it's set up. Now it's just time to pipulate it. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon. And don't forget to subscribe.